The internet is filled with misinformation about protein. From the vegans to the carnivores, everyone has their own idea about the foods that you should be eating and how you can actually use those foods to build muscle. I've been lifting for the past 10 years and have been trying to figure out the best method to use protein to actually build muscle. I've tried all of the diets from the I've tried all of the diets from the vegetarians to the Greg Doucet anabolic cookbook to being a full carnivore. So I've tried all of the methods. I've poured through the scientific evidence. I've watched a fuck ton of YouTube videos. And I'm going to distill everything that you need to know about protein, when you should be eating it, what types of protein are going to be best for you, and all other frequently asked questions when it comes to building muscle in this video. So let's go. Number one question asked all the time is how much protein should I be consuming on a day-to-day basis? If you're in America, you want to eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight at an absolute minimum if you want to be making optimal gains. In kilograms, this comes out to 2.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. Now, these are best practices. It's not 100% required to eat this amount of protein to build muscle, but it's going to help you build the most muscle. Studies have shown that you can go as low as around 0.8 or 0.75 grams per pound of body weight and still build muscle, but you're not going to be getting the most bang for your buck. I'm 185 pounds. I'm always going to be trying to get at least 185 grams of protein. Real quick, I have a community that teaches you how to build muscle and get a six pack in 90 days while following the keto carnivore diet. If you're interested, click the first link in the description right now. It's completely free. I look forward to seeing you in there. Number two, when should I be eating protein? For so many years on the internet, there was this theory called the anabolic window. And the anabolic window said that you had to have protein within 30 minutes of your workout. Otherwise, you're going to spontaneously combust. It's like, ah, yes, this makes complete sense. My body is inefficient. And will not make gains if I don't eat protein within 30 minutes. If you think about it logically, that's not how your body works. You have plenty of calories in food stores. You don't need to get protein within 30 minutes. But within 60 to 90 or even 2 hours, you can get your protein and you're going to be completely fine. I like to eat protein within an hour of my workout. And that just accounts for me driving home, showering, cooking the food, and then eating it. You don't need to pound a protein shake right after your workout. It's not necessary, but if that's an easy way for you to get your protein in, totally acceptable. You don't need to do it that fast. Up to two hours is a good benchmark. Once you get past two hours, your body is going to start to need some protein, and it might cause some muscle breakdown, which we don't want. So within 120 minutes, get your protein in. When it comes to consumption, splitting up protein with each meal is a very effective method of making sure you can get all of it throughout the day. I used to wake up and just have a bowl of oatmeal and like some peanut butter and go to school. If you think about it, there's not really much protein in there. I was maybe getting 10 grams at the beginning of the day and it made it so much harder for me to get protein because I had to pound it during lunch and dinner. Once I started eating protein in the morning too, either with some eggs or I would add protein powder or yogurt, it made it so much easier for me to get my protein consumption for the day. If I'm 185 pounds and I'm only eating three meals, not counting any snacks or anything, I need to be having 60 to 65 grams of protein with every meal. There are certain strategies that make that easier or harder, which I'll get into later in this video. I already touched on this, but you want to have protein first thing in the morning because of something called muscle protein synthesis. Muscle protein synthesis is the biological process of your body taking protein and turning it into muscle. Eating protein first thing in the morning is going to allow your body to start beginning this process and put you in a muscle building mode. Very important if you're prioritizing making enough gains. Next is the type of protein that we want to be eating and what are the best types of foods that are going to help us build the most muscle. I want to break down the difference between plant protein and animal protein. For so many years, I thought they were equivalent. 20 grams of protein is 20 grams of protein, right? It's all protein. It's actually not true. 
because of something called bioavailability. Now, bioavailability is the amount of protein that our body actually absorbs compared to the amount of protein that we consumed. Certain foods are going to be more bioavailable than others. If you compare the bioavailability of pea protein, which is a plant-based protein, compared to whey, you would need to consume around 35 grams of pea protein to get the same effect from consuming 20 grams of whey protein. For that reason, whey protein will always be superior to plant-based proteins. Let's talk about the actual foods that we want to be eating that are going to be good for our protein consumption. The best protein you can eat, the most bioavailable protein, the protein that has a handbook written into your DNA on what to do with it is meat. More specifically, fatty red meat. So fatty red meat could be steak or ground beef, bison, elk, venison, goat, lamb. This is really healthy for you for a few reasons. Fatty red meat contains a ton of protein and a ton of fat. Now, like I said before, protein is the building block of muscle, but fat, it's actually the building block of testosterone. So you're getting kind of a double-edged sword effect where you're getting the building block of muscle and you're getting the building block of the most important hormone for you to actually build more muscle. Things to consider when you're buying your red meat from the store, pasture raised, grass fed and grass finished are the healthiest, most nutrient dense forms of these meat. Animals that red meat comes from are naturally supposed to eat grass their entire life. In the modern farming system, especially here in America, cows are fed a lot of grains, wheat, corn, soy, in order to fatten them up and increase that intramuscular fat that you see in the steak when you buy it from the store. Yes, the steak is fattier, but that doesn't mean it's healthier because the animal wasn't getting the nutrition it needed and therefore the meat will be lacking nutrients as well. Grass is the most nutritious food for cows and therefore the meat will be more nutritious for you as well. The number one fat to cook your food in is going to be beef tallow, specifically grass fed and finished. Beef tallow is just rendered fat from a steak and it's completely natural. It's exactly what your body needs. Butter is the second best option, also grass finished. And any sort of oil after that, olive oil, avocado oil, those are subpar because they come from plants. Animal-based proteins and animal-based fats are going to help you build the most muscle. Now, the second best option for you to eat is pasture-raised eggs. Same thing when it comes to the beef. Chickens are supposed to be grazing outside. You don't want to have chickens that are eating corn, soy, grains, whatever, it makes them extra fat and less nutritious. So pasture raised, cook it in beef tallow or grass fed butter. That's really fucking good for you. Now the other meats after that chicken, turkey, duck, whatever, like birds, that stuff is okay. When you're eating those foods, you want to stray more towards the fattier cuts, like the chicken thighs, the chicken legs, the chicken breast just has too much protein. It's so much protein that you're not getting enough fat and you're just overloading your body with protein. It's important to have a really nice ratio of protein to fat because it helps with the actual absorption of the protein and the production of the hormones that are so crucial for you to actually engage in muscle protein synthesis. Next up on the list is protein shakes. Whey protein, casein protein, like this stuff is fine. It's completely acceptable. Some people get digestive issues from consuming these types of foods, but you can still eat them. It's going to help you make gains, but simply just not as optimal as just eating fatty red meat. So fatty red meat and eggs are going to be the one, two, and then like chicken thighs is going to be number three. After that, if you need quick protein, you don't have access to it, the only thing you can buy is whey protein or casein protein, I would suggest having those, but make sure you look at the ingredients. A lot of the protein powders are filled with a ton of extra stuff that you really don't need. Preservatives, emulsifiers, natural and artificial flavors. If you look at the ingredients and it says natural flavors, that actually isn't good for you. 
naturally flavored, still comes from a lab, still has been chemically altered and is not natural for your body to be consuming. So watch out for natural flavors. Less forms of protein that are kind of acceptable is dairy protein. So yogurt and milk. This stuff is fine. It has a lot more sugar than just eating the red meat. It's not as nutrient dense, right? But if you just need to get the extra protein, like totally fine. I like to have 0% Greek yogurt just because I like the taste, but a whole fat option will also be good because it has a little bit more nutrients. Next, I'm going to do my meal breakdown so you can get an example of how I consume protein and make gains throughout the day. So I'm 185 pounds and I have about 200 grams of protein every single day. And this is how I do it. I follow a mixture of the key of a keto and carnivore diet. What that means is, is I do not consume any carbohydrate. Fun fact for you, you can become super jacked and have a ton of energy without carbs. You don't need carbs. So anyways, in the morning I wake up and I have eight eggs. Each egg has six grams of protein. So that ends up being 48 grams of protein first thing in the morning. For lunch, I have a pound of beef, which is 80 grams of protein. For dinner, I have four eggs and a half pound of beef, which is 64 grams of protein. And it comes out to being 192 grams of protein with the three meals. Now I supplement with things like nuts throughout the day. and That'll give me like 10 to 20 grams extra protein. And I'll end up being over 200 grams. I'm a huge fan of this keto carnivore diet. It helps me feel focused and energized every single day. I recommend it if you're trying to take your muscle building journey to the next level. There are some fears that you can eat too much protein and it's going to damage your kidneys. It's going to damage your colon and end up leading to degradation of these organs. I just want to dispel those beliefs because they aren't true if you follow this one principle, which is eat enough fat. Fat is the number one digestive ingredient for your body, especially following a keto carnivore diet. You don't eat any fiber, but people are actually healthier overall. It's because fat aids in the digestion. It acts almost as if like a lubricant for the intestines and allows you to have healthy organs. So no, your kidneys are not going to be damaged by eating a fuck ton of protein. It's simply a myth that has been around for many years and keeps on circulating for some reason. Other commonly asked questions like, do you need to be having different types of protein if you're on a fat loss phase, muscle building phase, or a maintenance phase? And like I said before, you always want to be hitting that threshold of one gram per pound of body weight. Now, if you're cutting calories extremely, which I don't really recommend, you would want to increase protein to preserve the muscle. But when it comes to fat loss, You never really want to be cutting calories that extremely. There's other methods that work much more effectively. Do you need to be taking whey protein? No, you don't. I don't consume any whey protein and I get over 200 grams of protein every single day. Real quick, I have a community that teaches you how to build muscle and get a six pack in 90 days while following the keto carnivore diet. If you're interested, click the first link in the description right now. It's completely free. I look forward to seeing you in there.